This will serve as our regular meeting for this October 28, 2019. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to present tonight Brother Willie Carter, who is the senior pastor at the Move of God Deliverance Center of 121 Pinecrest Drive. Brother Carter, we'll ask you. Let us bow our heads. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Father, we thank you today, God, that you are who you say you are. And, oh, God, we ask now that you would cover each one of us. God, that you would open our ears and eyes of understanding. Give us the courage, God, to be able to accomplish every assignment, God, that you have placed before us. Oh, God, let us be able to agree to disagree. Let us be able, God, to still stand shoulder to shoulder and do the work, God, that you have purpose for each one of us to do. God, now I pray for you to bless this city, bless the people of this city. Cause them, God, to go out and run like never before, that they may be able to do something that has not been done before. Bless our youth in this city. Oh, now, God, we thank you because we believe you for your word that all things are working together for the good of them that love you. And we love you tonight, God. I pray now that you bless each person in this building. Cover them in the name of Jesus. God, this is your servant's prayer. Let every heart say amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. As always, would you please stand and face the flag. The Coffee County Navy Junior ROTC will lead us in our uh, pledge. Lieutenant Junior Grade Marino will lead us. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the order of the agenda. Second. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed? Outstanding. Next item on our agenda will be the second reading and public hearing of the GMA small sale ordinance and ECG model electric pole attachment ordinance. As always, we will turn this over to our city attorney. Mr. Jerome Adams, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. There are two ordinances for your consideration tonight, and this will be the second reading on both these ordinances. They're very lengthy, so I'll read an abbreviated version. The first one is a wireless facilities and antenna code ordinance, and <clears throat> this authorizes the city of Douglas to establish reasonable regulations for the installation, construction, maintenance, renewal, removal, and relocation of pipes, mains, conduits, cable, wires, poles, tower traffic, and other signals and other equipment facilities or appliances in or along, over, or under the public roads of the city of Douglas. <clears throat> Further, 47 U.S.C. 253C provides that the city has authority to manage its public rights away. Finally, the Georgia Streamlining Wireless Facilities and Antennas Act, OCGA 36, Chapter 66C, addresses the placement of small wireless facilities in the public right of way of local governments throughout the state of Georgia. The second ordinance is the electric pole attachment code ordinance and it authorizes the city to prescribe, revise, collect rates, fees, tolls, or charges for the service facilities or, or commodities furnished or made available by such undertaking included without limitation as here and after defined electrical facilities. Now, that's the second reading of both these ordinances. Now I must at this time open a public hearing. If anyone wishes to make a public comment on these proposed ordinances, please come forward and state whatever comment you may have. Apparently there is no one, Mr. Mayor, and he's ready for action. Thank you very much. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Second. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. 
The next item is the consent agenda items. And as always, we will turn this over to our city manager and he will tell everyone the items that were placed on the consent agenda. Mr. Davis, how are you doing this morning, well, this right. evening? I'm sorry. We have four items coming over on the consent agenda. Uh, uh, items one, two, five, and six. Item one is approval of October 14th minutes. Item two is approval of the fee waiver for the Bethel Family Worship Center uh, of the CD Wear Center. Uh, item five is approval of the boys and girls uh, and sublease uh, contract for the 21st uh, Century Group uh, from the Board of Education Renewal. And item six is the approval of the date change of the November 11th meeting to move it to Thursday, November 14th. Thank you. At this time, I entertain a motion for the Second. items placed on the consent agenda. So moved. Second. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed? Motion carries. Next item on our regular agenda is work session items that brought forward for discussion. Mr. City Manager. The first item being brought forward is uh, item three, uh, discuss the vehicle purchases, the, the budget of the vehicle purchases for the multiple departments like that's the utility director. Good Thank evening. you, Mr. Davis. Good evening, Mayor and Commission again. Good evening. As discussed in the work session, we are asking for approval for the purchase of seven trucks. Uh, I can go to, through those individuals if y'all would like, or we can do them as a grand total. It's up to you guys. Y'all tell me what y'all prefer. Mr. Well, Dart. Okay. Which, which uh, department do you reiterate the department? Yes, ma'am. I'll do that real quick. Uh, we've got one uh, new 2020 F-250 coming out of the electric department. Uh, we got one new 2020 F-250 coming out of the sewer division. We got one new 2020 F-150 coming out of parts and wrecks. Uh, we've got two 2020 F-150s coming out of the water distribution. One of those water distribution, one of those water pumping and treatment. And then we have one new 2020 F-150 crew cab that's coming out of the sewer division at the sewer plant. And then we've got one new 2020 F-350 super cab truck that's coming out of the wastewater division, wastewater collections. So six of those trucks coming out of enterprise funds, one coming out of parts and wrecks. Grand total, um, let me flip that page, $220,360.55. And all these were budgeted trucks in, in the current budget. You're welcome. Mr. Moore, do you have any comments? Second. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? Uh, before we uh, motion and second, I would like to say something on that. Um, I don't know, with our uh, vehicles that we have with the city, I would like to see more uh, upkeep of them because I had the opportunity today to you know, just go out and look at some of the vehicles that uh, we've been using. Some are old, some are new. And the employees themselves are not keeping them up like they should be. I understand that um, it's not their vehicle, but it's the citizen vehicle. And um, they are not being up kept like they should be up kept, you know, everything. And uh, I would like to see each department here come up with some kind of, you know, um, checklist on what we should do to make sure that these vehicles be kept up like they should be kept up because, like I said, I had opportunities to visit um, each department and looked at some of the newer trucks and some of the older trucks, you know, and I think they should be, you know, a upkeep better than what they are doing. You know. okay. I, so I, I got a question. Yes, so which departments are you talking about with those because some of those departments need newer cars <laughs> like some of them I know got old cars so I mean and I gave you guys a list of what mm -hmm. what we're placing what we're passing down uh, and to Commissioner Taylor's point there's some of these 1999 models 2000, right. 2001 and when these vehicles were bought we did not have stuff in place for checklists we do now okay. um, so I think you'll see the newer vehicles are being taken care of better than some of the older ones. Right. Um, Kevin does a really good job at ESG, you know, because a lot of these vehicles that we're buying are going to be used by ESG personnel, not city personnel. So we'll, me and him will get together and make sure. But they do very in-depth checklists on their vehicles every day. So I think you'll see that get better now. Right. 
The reason I say I, I had checked some of the old ones out, and I understand they was old, but then on my own, I went and checked some of the newer models out, and within the next five years, if they continue with that track that they got now, you know, it would be okay. right back here again. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get together and make sure they okay. do. Oh, so you're saying on the newer model? Newer model. Okay. Yeah. Any other comments, Commissioner Dern? No, sir. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem? No, sir. All right, there's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Opposed. Motion carries. Motion carries. Next item. May I discussing the work, work session this sign that we're talking about buying will be on the back side of one of our entryway signs on the north end of town um, in the background you can see that it will be used to advertise mainly for city events uh, not private or public stuff uh, with that being said we're asking the mayor and board of commissioners to approve the purchase of one new LED sign to be utilized by the public information division as discussed in tonight's work session meeting from the low bid submitted from United Signs located in Norcross, Georgia for a grand total of $15,390 and this was also a budgeted item. At this time I entertain a motion. <coughs> second. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? I just uh, I uh, that I, I maintain with this uh, as I did with the previous items. Correct. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the items um, from the uh, work session. Uh, we have two out of two speakers we'll right. under staff comments. Under staff comments? Good. <laughs> all right, next item on the agenda is staff comments. All right, we post 515, Grown Loving, speak about some of his activities. Good evening, Mr. Lovett. Good Lovin. evening, Mayor Thank Commission, you. ladies and gentlemen, and to all the citizens for Douglas and Coffee County. Uh, on behalf of our post commander and our members, I want to make you aware of some events we're having and hope you'll join us on as many as you can. First, uh, we're going to join the Coffee High School and their Veterans Day program on November 11th, 9 to 11 a.m. Following that, post 515 and Tender Care are going to host a meal for veterans, all veteran guests at the CE Ware Center from 12 to 2 p.m. Come on out and have a meal and show the veterans you uh, you care. First responders are invited uh, in uniform. Come on by and have a meal. Then on November the 17th, 10 a.m. to 4, we're going to Dublin to take some comfort items, have a meal with the veterans, play bingo, and hopefully give some entertainment to them because some of the veterans, when they're brought there, they're left and families don't come back to see them, so we're their family. Come join us if you can. Then on November 19th, there's a gentleman coming out of the president staff that from the VA going to come down talk about laws changes rules and some do's and don'ts or just things about the VA and he'll entertain questions that'll be at post 515 from 330 to 530 again veterans come on out and get some questions answered and then the big pro uh, project we have are reefs across America we currently have 74 cemeteries and over 2700 veterans that we are putting flags and reefs on of course on December 7th we're placing our flags and then shortly after that, we place the wreath. Don't know when they're coming, but come on out and join us and help us help us do that. Uh, our program 
is December the 14th at the CE Ware Center from 12 to 1. Again, come out and join us. Love to have you. Uh, our mission, remember, honor, teach. We're going to remember those veterans that have fought and died for the freedom we have. Honor those currently serving their families. And we want to teach our children, our young, about the freedom they have and the sacrifices made. All the funds we get come from you. We have fundraisers going, boss and butt. Any contributions, it's never too early to donate, never too late. Thank you again, and come out and join us if you can. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. you, Levin. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Levin. Have a hand, Biker will be next, and uh, that will be Larry Neesmith. <clears throat> About four years ago, we got together with the city, and when we had the bike barbecue and festival, the bikers participated, and we started participating. At this time, we had formed Helping Hands Bikers LLC. We specifically do what we do because we love to ride motorcycles, and we do charities, and we vote each year for two charities out of our community that we raise money for. This year we raised money for, we voted for Steel Waters and My Brother's Keepers, which is a food bank out at Saving Grace Ministries. Okay. Miss Joanne Lewis, will you step? Miss Sherry Smith, will you step? Okay, please. <laughs> On behalf of Helping Hand Bikers LLC and our biker community to come together that we put a rally or a festival on and usually it's the first weekend in September. This year we raised $250 to go to Steel Waters and $250 to go to my brother's Keeper's Food Bank. Smith. Now he's going to switch hats and Red Cross guy. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, staff. Um, Red Cross Syrian and Douglas is needing help. Um, I'm proud to say that when we do have a disaster here in Douglas, our shelter for the last four or five years has remained the number one shelter in the state of Georgia. We house up to 964 people. No, oh, sorry. 994 people a couple of years ago. This year we didn't have as many, thank God, but we did have a vacuum weeds. Right now we're seeking help from our local volunteers. We need people to come in to help us maintain our shelter so we don't have other people from different states coming in running our shelter. If you will, please reach out to me at 912-393-4051. That's again, 912-393-4051. The American Red Cross, we are here for you at any given time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? <coughs> the, uh, that's the end of the uh, staff comments. The next item is the uh, Mayor and Commissioner's comments. Uh, I would like to entertain a motion that we uh, adjourn the meeting. Can I ask a question before we leave? Yes, you, yes, you may. Um, last meeting on the 14th, mm -hmm. I think that's what day we had the meeting, 14th. and um, we came with a utility committee. I understand we formed a committee to, you know, to over, uh, oversee and, to, you know, anything that comes to a problem. 
but I also ask uh, what would be the method for the seven to nine days that was added to the bill. And I asked you, Mayor, and um, you told me that I could talk to Charlie or whatsoever. So I want to know, like, could, what what was the agreement for the seven to nine days? Are you going to put two days on one bill? Are you going to wipe it away or what? Mr. What discussion? Davis, Mr. Davidson, I talked about it. It was basically uh, the citizens, it's a case-by-case -case basis. They will contact uh, Miss Boulder, sit down and have a conversation with her, and those six to nine days can be spread out from six months to 12 months. Is that correct? So to minimize the impact on the citizens. Okay, so it would be spread every two? No, every two. no. each citizen uh -huh. come and say, hey, look, come these back. nine days, I want to pay them off in three months. Okay. Or I want to pay them off in six months. Okay, so they have the option to pay it off Correct. to 12 months. Correct. Okay, so will y'all send a blast out to that utility board? Do that. Letting them know about that? Because some of them are still concerned. And some of them did say that they came and there was no help done. So, uh, so I was just reiterating and recapping on that. Thank you. Well, I'd like to also ask a question about it. May I? Yes, you may. Thank you for acknowledging me. At the last meeting, it was my understanding that a committee would be formed to review. Each person on the council mm -hmm. would appoint one or two people. That was the last discussion. Nobody has said anything. I don't know if the committee has met or what. You, no, no, I'm talking about we were supposed to appoint someone. That's what I think he, he recommended. I don't know if we said that we would. I'm not sure about that. So, <clears throat> i just like to say, Mr. Mayor, being that the citizens came forward <clears throat> with a concern, I don't think that we should just leave it in limbo I think that the city manager's office should have got something initiated to, 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 to formalize what we said. Because we did say each person up here would appoint one to two people. So, what's happening with that sound? Is it my mic or what? But, I mean, do you, you understand what I'm I mean, saying? Y'all got to form like, because since that's kind of a political discussion, I mean, y'all gonna have to come up with whatever plan y'all want or don't want or whatever because, I mean, that's y'all's y'all's call on that. I mean, that's not a. I understand, but so. as city manager or mayor, somebody has to take the initiative to make sure that we do something. If that's because we did say we would form a committee that we all appoint yeah. one person or two people, or whatever. So I think we might be in order to try to get it on the agenda for the next meeting. I mean what proceeds that's what, which that way sounds we need good. To move yeah, that sounds good. I can agree to that. Thank you. Thank you. Last <laughs> thing I have, I wanna ask, uh, because you didn't mention it, Mr. City Manager, in the uh, in the uh consent agenda. So the Evergreen Avenue Road rebuilding what what was the side of the pond? I mean uh, I, I talked to the mayor when I was walking in. And f first, since I already began talking, let me first of all, first and foremost, apologize that I was unable to be here for the work session to the constituents, to the citizens of Douglas. <coughs> I've been awake since 5 o'clock this morning, and I've been running all day. So I'm really kind of exhausted right now. So if I don't seem to make my thoughts coherent, <coughs> please understand that I'm, I'm a little tired. But so I, please accept my apologies. I wasn't here for the work session, and I had placed it on the agenda to discuss the Evergreen Avenue Road rebuilding. So if you all had a discussion, I need a recap so I can let my constituents know in case they don't watch it on TV yes. exactly where we are with that. Yes, ma'am. I mean, as discussed in the September 23rd meeting, um, in the upcoming budget preparation for the FY21 budget, um, as discussed in that meeting, we would be working in our agenda items I mean, during the budget time to add that project to our um, FY21 budget. 
you know, the budget process starts in the January, February time frame, the budget starts in July. Right. And, and I, I hear y'all, but I remember stating that being that this is an election year, none of us know who are up for the election, if we will be here. And I wanted us to try to go ahead and get something resolved for those citizens because, you know, one, one administration is not bound by the other. We can sit here and say next year, but if, if four of us that's here now, if we're not here next year, that administration would not be bound or obligated to honor um, that role being repaired. And, and it's in terrible shape. And I know the mayor said he was going to get with his dad about <coughs> seeing what the county could do. Right. Because that's also a commission of policy. Yeah, I know the county is looking at their budget year starts in January. They're looking at some internal discussions concerning that. Same way with our budget preparation for the Ju July budget time frame. And so those conversations are somewhat being held. Okay. Uh, but okay. I, I just wanted to make it clear, you know, that you know, if it's a different administration, they wouldn't be bound by what what we're saying we're going to do. I just want that to be clear. So once again, I've tried to make sure that that road got repaired like it needed to be. Okay. Um, the last last thing I have, Mr. Mayor, bear with me. I want to commend Post 515. I want to commend Helping, helping Hands Bikers. I want to commend um, Red Cross, Mr. Neesmith, for the, for, the, for the good things that you, you all and your organizations are doing to make our community a better place for the citizens. I really appreciate your hard work because I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. Um, I want to, um, lastly, I think, remind everyone that this is the final week, October the 28th until November the 1st, is the final week to go out and vote early. Uh, citizens of Douglas, you need to exercise that, that right. It is definitely a privilege of some countries don't allow citizens to, to vote. But, um, I just want to remind you all, if you have not voted, please go out and vote. Try to vote early and avoid the long lines because you might get frustrated and then decide not to. This is the last week for early voting. It ends on this Friday. One last thing that I wanted to say. Com Commissioner Pearson, you've said the one last thing three times. Well, and I'm trying to be patient. With my apologies, how long have I been talking? I uh, did start the time. Okay. Well, I, I'm so please done. be brief. I'm about done. Um, I received this code section 21-2-409, assisting electors who cannot read English or who have disabilities. Uh, in being out, you know, campaigning, talking to people, this, that, and the other, there are several people who are saying that <clears throat> they're being told that they cannot assist a person who's illiterate or, or disabled because they might be a cousin to one of the candidates. I just wanted to make it clear, since we have members of the Board of Elections here, that um, according to Code Session 21-2-409, cousins does not apply. So. People should not be being told because their cousin is a candidate, they cannot assist someone. And I have a copy of that statute here. So I'd like to share that with um, the people here on the Board of Elections. But that's the last thing I have to say, Mr. Mayor. Please right. vote for the people. We have a, uh, a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed? Motion carries. Stand adjourned. Hold on.